My Weird School Book Number One, Miss Daisy is Crazy, by Dan Gutman. Chapter Seven, Bonbons and Footballs. The next day, Miss Daisy brought in a box with ribbons on it, and told us she had a surprise. What's in the box? We pleaded. It's a secret. Please. Well, okay, she said, opening the box. It's bonbons. Miss Daisy said she thought we might be able to use them for arithmetic problems, so we could learn together. She put the bonbons on the table in the front of the room. There must have been twenty or thirty of them. Can somebody think up? An arithmetic problem using bonbons, she asked. Andrea, if you had three bonbons in a box, said Andrea as she put three bonbons into her pencil box, and you had three boxes just like that, how many bonbons would you have all together? Miss Daisy looked at Andrea's pencil box for a long time. Counting in her head and on her fingers, any dummy would know that three boxes with three bonbons in each box would equal nine bonbons. Three times three is nine. But Miss Daisy didn't seem to know that. Finally, she just opened up Andrea's pencil box and popped the three bonbons into her mouth. Who cares how many bonbons I would have? She asked. As long as I get to eat some of them, Miss Daisy really needs a lot of help with arithmetic. After she had eaten her bonbons, Miss Daisy passed out bonbons for all of us, and we had a bonbon party. Then she said that was enough arithmetic for the day, and asked what we wanted to talk about for the rest of our math time. Football! I shouted. Miss Daisy didn't like that I talked without raising my hand first. Personally, I don't see what raising my hand has to do with talking. I don't talk with my hands. But she did let me talk, and I told her that football is just about my favoriteest thing in the world, and I know all about it. My dad takes me to every game of the Chargers. A professional football team. Maybe you can help me, Miss Daisy said. I always wondered how long is a football field. A hundred yards, I told her. Anybody knows that. Wow, that's a big field. With a field that big, how can you and your father see what's going on? My dad always tries to get us seats near the fifty-yard line. I said, "They're the best tickets." Why? Miss Daisy asked. Because the fifty-yard line is right in the middle of the field. Does that mean that half of a hundred yards would be fifty yards? She asked. Yep, I see. Miss Daisy said. So if you know there are a hundred yards on a football field. Do you know how many pennies there are in a dollar, Andrea? A hundred, hollered Andrea Young, just like a football field. Really, said Miss Daisy. So if half the football field is fifty yards, how many pennies are in half a dollar? Fifty, Michael Robinson shouted, because fifty is half of a hundred. And fifty plus fifty makes a hundred, and half of fifty must be twenty-five, because two quarters is fifty cents. Added Emily, and four quarters makes a dollar. Ryan exclaimed, and four quarters makes a football game too. Miss Daisy shouted, jumping up and down with excitement. Wait a minute, I said. I thought you told us we were finished with arithmetic. This wasn't arithmetic, she told us. It was football.
Well, okay, I said. Just as long as you weren't trying to sneak arithmetic into our conversation about football. Why would I do that? Miss Daisy asked, and then she winked at me. Sometimes it's hard to tell if Miss Daisy is serious or not. Chapter Eight: A Lot of Books. On Thursday, Principal Klutz came into our class. He was wearing a hat, which almost made him look like a regular person who had hair on his head. I have to go to a meeting. Principal Klutz told us, but I heard that some of you second graders had something important you want to discuss with me. Miss Daisy said that I could ask my question. Can we buy the school? Hmm. Principal Klutz said, "Hmm" is what grown-ups say instead of "er" or "um" or "ah" when they don't know what to say. Why do you want to buy the school? Principal Klutz asked. Because we want to turn it into a video game arcade. I told him. I see. The principal said, "Schools cost a lot of money." How much? I asked. If you tell us how much it will cost, we'll raise the money. I'll tell you what, Principal Klutz said. I can't sell you the school, but I can rent it to you for a night. Do you know the difference between buying and renting? Andrea Young got her hand up first, as usual. When you buy a video, you get to keep it forever, she said. If you rent it, you have to return it to the video store in a couple of days. That's right, the principal said. Would you be interested in renting the school for a night? How much would that cost? I asked. One million pages, Principal Klutz replied. Huh? If you kids read a million pages in books. You can turn the school into a video game arcade for one night. A million pages. That sounded like a lot of books. How about a thousand pages? I suggested. A million, said Principal Klutz. That's my final offer. Take it or leave it. Would it be okay if some of the other classes helped us out? Miss Daisy asked. Certainly, Principal Klutz said. The more, the merrier, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. If the kids in this school read a million pages, I will come to the big video game night, dressed in a gorilla suit. You've got a deal, I said, rushing forward to shake Principal Klutz's hand. In my head, I was already hatching a plan. Chapter nine. Put those books away. As soon as I got home. From school, I went up to my big sister Amy's room. Amy is in fifth grade, so she knows lots of things. You've got to help me, I said. If the school reads a million pages in books, Principal Klutz will put on a gorilla suit and let us turn the school into a video game arcade. I would do anything to see that, Amy said. Amy knows how to work the computer really well. She helped me make posters that said, "Let's turn our school into a video game arcade," and "Let's turn Principal Klutz into a gorilla." We tacked the posters up all over Main Street. Amy sent emails and instant messages to all the kids in the fifth grade. The next morning, we tacked. The posters up all over school. I passed them out to the kids I saw. Mrs. Rupee, the school librarian, said we could put up some posters in the library. Mr. Sacco, the custodian, said we could put up some in the lunchroom and the bathrooms. Miss Hind, the music teacher, said we could put some up in the music room. By the middle of the day, everyone in the school was reading like crazy. Kids were reading during lunch. 
Kids were reading during recess. Kids were plowing their way through books and then running to the school library to ask Mrs. Rupee if they could check out more. I read a book about frogs, and I don't even care anything about frogs. Some of the teachers were starting to get mad because kids were reading books when they were supposed to be doing other things. Please put those books away, Miss Daisy had to tell us. It's time for reading. Miss Daisy said she was sorry that she wouldn't be able to help us very much because she didn't know how to read, but she was nice enough to draw a big mural in the hallway with a giant thermometer on it. Every time we read a lot of pages, she would make the temperature line on the thermometer go up. At the top of the thermometer were the words "one million." Soon, kids were bursting into our room and yelling, "Mrs. Big's class has read another five hundred pages," and Miss Hessenfreds says to add another six hundred pages. It was fun watching the temperature. Go up. At the end of a week, our school had read almost a half a million pages. Chapter Ten: Football players are really dumb. Boys and girls, today we have a very special and famous guest. Miss Daisy said, "His name is Boomer Wiggins." Wow! Was the first thing everybody said. Who's he? Was the second thing everybody said, but I knew who Boomer Wiggins was because Boomer Wiggins was my hero. He was the quarterback of my favorite football team, the Chargers. Wow, a real football player right in our classroom. Miss Daisy told us that Boomer Wiggins had a daughter in fourth grade, and that's why he was spending the day at our school. When Boomer Wiggins walked into the class, everybody gasped. He was really big and had so many muscles that they poked right against his shirt. We all crowded around him, and Boomer let us feel his arm muscles. I couldn't even get my hands around them. Then Boomer picked up Emily with one hand. He was amazing. Then he gave each of us a little plastic football. And he signed his name on each one. Does anybody have any questions? Boomer asked. Do you like knocking guys on their butts? I asked. Everybody laughed, even though I didn't say anything that was funny. Miss Daisy said it was butt, not butts, because a person only has one butt. But I said a butt was divided into two halves, so really it could be butts. Miss Daisy said that was enough of that talk. I said she shouldn't be complaining because she was the one who started it. I don't like knocking people down, Boomer told us, but sometimes we have to because it's part of the game. Mister Wiggins asked Miss Daisy, "Is it true that football players are really dumb?" We all gasped. I was afraid Boomer Wiggins might knock Miss Daisy on her butt. Excuse me," Boomer said, like he wasn't sure if he had heard the question. Well, somebody once told me that if you play football, you don't have to know how to read or write or do arithmetic or go to school. Who told you that? Boomer asked Miss Daisy. Everybody looked at me. I slid down so that my head was almost under my desk, and I hid behind my notebook. Oh, a good friend of mine told me. Miss Daisy said, "Is it true? If I didn't go to school, I never could have become a football player." Boomer told us, "I had to read and study my playbook very carefully. I had to write letters to my fans. Every week, I have to study very hard to get ready for the next game." "Did you go to college?" asked Miss Daisy. "Yes," Boomer said, and. When my football career is over, I plan to go back to school so I can become a doctor. Wow! I said, I want to go to college someday so I can become a doctor 
and knock guys on their butts. I mean butt. Everybody laughed, even though I didn't say anything funny. Then, to prove how smart he was, Boomer Wiggins read us a book and passed out bookmarks that said, "Achieve your goal by reading on them." Miss Daisy said that even though Boomer read the book to us, we could still add fifty-two pages to the total number of pages we've read. The temperature level on the thermometer in the hallway kept getting higher and higher. Chapter Eleven: We Rule the School. Finally, the big moment arrived. It was Andrea Young, of course, who read the one millionth page. We all cheered when Miss Daisy went out in the hallway and filled in the top of the thermometer all the way up to the words one million. That Friday night, everybody in the whole school. Showed up at school. Can you believe it? I actually couldn't wait to get to school on the weekend. When we got there, a big banner was hanging over the front door that said, "We read a million pages on it." Principal Klutz was waiting for us. He was wearing a gorilla suit, just like he promised. Inside. There was a table of snacks and treats and juice. Miss Daisy had brought in bonbons, but best of all, the gym was filled wall to wall with video games. I had never seen so many video games in my life. Families had brought in lots of TV sets, game systems, and games, and lined them up all around the gym. We could play all we wanted, and the only rule was that you had to take turns. For the kids who didn't like video games, there were tables of board games set up in the middle of the gym. I think they're called board games because you get so bored playing them. I played just about every video game in the gym. After a few hours of staring into screens, I had a splitting headache. My hands hurt, and I thought my eyes were going to fall out of my head. It was the greatest night of my life. Chapter Twelve. Poor Miss Daisy. Monday at school, we had social studies. Miss Daisy said she was really sorry, but she didn't know anything at all about social studies, and that we would have to help her. I don't even know the name. Of the first president of the United States, she told us. You don't? We all said. I haven't a clue. It was George Washington. We all shouted. Really? Miss Daisy said with a wink. Never heard of him. I was beginning to suspect that Miss Daisy might have been just pretending that she didn't know anything all along. One day, I caught her looking at a piece of paper, and her eyes were moving back and forth like she was watching a ping pong game. "Hey, you're reading," I said. "I am not," she insisted. "You know I can't read." Then how come your eyes are moving back and forth like you're watching a ping pong game? I, I was just thinking about this great ping pong game I saw once," she replied. "It was great. You should have been there." Maybe she was joking, and maybe she wasn't. You can never tell with crazy Miss Daisy. If it turns out that Miss Daisy really doesn't know anything, I feel a little sorry for her. The kids in our school had read a million pages, and she couldn't read one page. The kids in our class knew how to spell and do arithmetic and social studies. She hardly knew anything at all. Don't feel bad, Miss Daisy. I told her, "We'll teach you reading, writing, and arithmetic, and we won't tell Principal Klutz how dumb you are." She gave me a big hug. It will be hard work teaching Miss Daisy everything that she doesn't know. I think that by the end of the year, if the whole class works together. We just might bring her up to second grade level. 
but it won't be easy.